各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看 J 与 J 论坛，由我 Jimmy 妈妈见，由我们的好朋友 Jim Nowhere 为我们一起讨论这个礼拜的时事。Happy New Year, Jim, once again. Hi, Jimmy. Happy New Year to you. And I think it is a happy New Year for most people. Well, it sounds like there's been a lot of big changes in your professional and 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 in in your、uh, field of expertise. Could you share with us a little bit what has changed? Uh, in these two weeks, and Happy New Year started out with a bang. <laughs> sure, sure.、Um, yes, this year, at least for me and those around me, this year has started off with a bang.、Um, business has never been busier than we all woke up from our ho- our holiday slumber and rest. I'm glad I got a good a lot of relaxation, being partially isolated because of COVID. Um, but business is is very active. I think what is going on now, in part because of the pandemic, is there is a great deal of pent up demand, pent up enthusiasm, pent up desire for people to get together again and get back to basic, get back to basics, and because of supply constrictions. Um, and they are very real, and they affect us in the real estate business probably as directly as anything else.、Um, that wages are going to go up; they're already beginning to go up.、Um, and normally, I would say that is not good news. But in our case, I think it is good news because what it will do is to shrink. The economic and income inequalities. It will allow people at lower parts of the economic ladder to move up and、um, increase their prosperity and share in prosperity. I think in time things will level out. The supply constraints will will relax, etc. Things will get back into balance. But at the same time. What we have, as an economy, wanted for a very long time, we now have, and that is called strong demand. In fact, the demand is so strong, some of it、um, hyper、uh, strong because of the government、uh, missteps,、um, is creating inflation. And so, I think we all have to be very careful about that.、Um, and so, it it. Uh, creates、uh, a bit of uncertainty out there. We all have to be careful about how we deal with it, but smart people can and should. Should I'd much rather have that than no momentum at all or things falling. And so, particularly when I look around, and when I was housing director for the city of Houston, we used to deal with poverty a lot, and we would say, "How much misfortune." Uh, could be improved if more people had better jobs, and I think that is happening now, and is coming. And I think it's not just in the United States, not just in Texas, not just in the United States, but I'm sensing the same thing、um, throughout most of the world. And as you know, I pay attention to things internationally as much as I do domestically.、Um, And the other side of things is, I, I have to relate what I've just been telling you and everyone a little bit、uh, to the personal side of things because our political situation is in such a mess, and our governmental services are in such a mess.、Uh, people keep asking me to get involved in politics, run for elective office,、um, do all these things in government, and I'm saying to myself. Uh, as much as I would be interested in doing that, I really don't want to ally myself with more failure. And I, I think the better path is to continue to pursue the private sector, and continue to pursue being successful, and and have the private sector pull ourselves out of the mess that government has created. All we're going to ask is that they get out of our way and stop restricting us. At every step of the way, and I told you last week that I read、um, these very important books over、uh, the holidays while I was isolated with COVID, and、um, I, I am more and more convinced that this new Omicron、um, is actually a blessing in disguise because almost everyone is going to get it. 
That's the bad news. But the good news is um, almost everyone will have minor or no symptoms at all. And then we'll have the benefit of the antibodies, which will then lead us to herd immunity, which will make the epidemic endemic, which means that we can manage it and it will stop the spread and stop the creation of more variants. So I believe this is the beginning of the end. And um, you wouldn't know that by listening to the media and watching the media. They continue to churn the anxiety and the fears and the unrest. Um, but in doing that, they gradually discredit themselves. So I'm, I'm, uh, well, Jim, you know, go ahead. I've said a lot and you've been, no, I, I love it. I, there's many things we agree on now. Uh, the fact is that we both believe in science. We did our part. We wear masks. We keep re repeating that throughout the last two years. Mm -hmm. You know, we started uh, recording right as the pandemics began. Okay. So okay. a year and a half, almost a year and eight months ago, mm -hmm. uh, a few months into the pandemic. As we grew with our audiences and went through this, we're still not out of, out of it. I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe when we started, I never imagined that a year and a half, almost two years later, we're still here. Mm -hmm. So yes, we believe in science. Do I think the media has misinformation? Yes, from both parts of the political spectrum. They, they're they for profit. They're to get views and clicks. On the ground, we both know, I personally know of so many of my friends and people that I know that got it or they're sick, but they don't even bother testing. I know that my kids' schools, they've changed the policy where you can return after just five days without mm -hmm. a negative test, mm -hmm. which means that this absolutely that everyone will get it now i'm not i'm not a scientist or a doctor i will not say this is good or bad from your point of view yes it, it, it hope i absolutely hope you're right i absolutely do but i cannot sit here and say um for the people that will get it that small percentage that might have adverse reaction you know for them they might not agree with us you know and mm -hmm. and it's, it's very hard i mean continue to mass up continue to social distance and and the end is nearer than when we started a year and a half ago, we could see the light. Now, when it comes to your economic economic outlook, mm -hmm. based on our, our, our analysis, Wall Street view, you're right, because there's fear in the market and fear in the street. However, in Wall Street, and, and that's why the divide is even bigger, is actually bullish because we have so much liquidity in the market. There's mm -hmm. just too much, and people are willing to spend. And the half and half knots are wider. Now, real estate is your, for, your forte, so we will get into that in a little bit, and I would love to hear what you say. But when it comes to uh, Wall Street, the market itself, yes, there will be volatility this year, but the fears are overblown. There, I mean, this is still the safe haven. Where else could money flow to? And we are still the largest economy in the world, and we still control the dollar. We still control the mm -hmm. worldwide economy. Right. So, and, and absolutely right about the labor shortage and having better jobs and people um, raising a minimum wage. Yes, in the short term, it will be painful, but the long run is long over to you because inflation, this is the highest inflation in what, the last 30 some years? Um, it was suppressed unnaturally by, by, by Washington for a long time. Inflation sometimes is not bad. So a lot of times it, it could reflect to be a healthier well, I guess the short-term pain is there. Mm -hmm. But for us, um, we do want to see the other side too. You know, a lot of the disadvantaged lower income portion of our population are hurting a lot more. And mm -hmm. we hope that we could, um, I mean, without getting into politics, <laughs> because we know what it's going to lead to. We're not talking about handouts, but there has to be ways. Creating jobs is the best way. Creating a vibrant economy. Um, we're very lucky to be in Texas. There's no doubt about that. We are in Texas, and we're in Houston, where there's just a, a, the energy and the, the growth and the boom and where everyone wants to come. Mm -hmm. now, could you share with our audience um, what is your outlook on real estate? Uh, and you mentioned a little bit earlier about, about a very, very bullish and positive outlook. 
Well, when uh, when more people have better jobs, which I think is coming because of the labor shortage, everybody will have better opportunity up and down the line and the income will be shared more equitably. That means more people can pay more for houses, um, whether they buy their own home or they rent a home or they rent a better apartment. And that means everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, but most people will have the opportunity to live better in a better place, in a better home, um, and have all of the things around them, I would hope would also be better, like better schools, better shopping, that kind of thing. But when that happens, then, um, then owners also get better returns, which attracts more investment, which then um, stimulates more development and a wider supply, which lowers prices, makes the economy more efficient so people can go up the next round. And so you get a benevolent, positive spiral up. I can talk about the spirals down. We've all lived through those too. But for now, I, I, I think it's, it's moving in the right direction, um, not just for financial reasons, but for human reasons as well. And, and, and so I'm, I'm optimistic about that. The other thing that happens is <clears throat> if the fear continues or if it continues in some avenues or if inflation brings higher interest rates, which in, it inevitably will, and if that spooks the bond market, which it inevitably will, and if it spooks the stock market, which may happen if the Fed increases too much too fast or if inflation kicks up in the market, um, constricts too fast, then it could affect the stock market. But what happens across the economy if that happens is people then come to what they call hard assets or real assets. In other words, people invest in property because they think it's more secure. In many cases, that's true. Uh, again, they need to be careful. But there is so much capital out there right now. And then you say to yourself, why is there so much capital? Well, what happened during the pandemic is a lot of people didn't spend. And so we have both rising incomes, which I've talked about, but we also have rising savings. And so any measure of liquidity or income relative to debt burdens on the private sector, individuals and corporations, is far better off than it's been in a very, very long time. People have incredible spending power and they have incredible investment power. There is a, a big growth in private capital right now which balances out because the government needs all of that capital and more. Um, and I just really hope that uh, we don't tax that benefit away, but we let it stay in the private system and keep multiplying. It's almost like a perpetual motion machine, uh, investment, new product, economic growth. People were constrained for the last year and a half about growth. We couldn't grow. We for a long, long time, we, we couldn't go out, we couldn't shop, we couldn't accept over the internet, uh, we couldn't go to entertainment or other experiences, and people want that now. And they want it in their personal life, but they also want it in their business life. Um, even hotels are beginning to recover. And the airlines are having problems today, not because they can't sell seats, they can sell the seats, the problem is, they can't get the they can't get the staff because many of the staff are home with with uh, some of this uh, COVID restrictions without symptoms. Thankfully, they're not really sick, but they have to stay away and isolate themselves like I had to do over the holiday weeks. So, again, I think all of this will settle out. And um, and the typical of the way the world economy works when the U.S. is prosperous we pull the rest of the world along with us, um, including particularly Asia, but also Latin America and much of Europe, too. So, um, I mean, 
I, I absolutely agree. You know, one thing you said that mattered was it's not just financial gain, but also for human advantage. I think that's very important. And, you know, as I look, being doing what I do, my problem has been with, with this, this basically a monopoly with the tech companies because the pandemic and accelerated our dependency on it. I know for my young children, social media is just bad news for, for, for my kids and for all, all kids that there's many advantages to come with it. But for children, that is absolutely not a good thing. And for, for, for even for adults, for their psychological well-being, is it, there's many, many, there's always flip sides to both things. But the, mm-hmm. what I look at is an antitrust. I mean, the way that they are dominating mom and pops and small business and the record profits, it, it, it's going to be very hard to continue. I mean, if you look at the market, the main gainers are, you, we all know the top five, top 10, and that's it. Everybody else is really suffering. However, thanks. Yeah, thanks. But Wall Street gain and prosperity doesn't necessarily reflect on the street. For no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not directly correlated. It is very rare to have both vibrant. And we've had a very long term, decade long, essentially bull market uh, with a few hiccups. And you're right. Our analysis is that, yes, it will continue to grow because there's nowhere to go but up with all the money out there and all the liquidity. And going to hard assets is absolutely one way, one of the best ways to um, to hedge, to diversify, and mm-hmm. to risk manage. To me, risk management is so important. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket, the whole adage. Everyone knows it, but greed and fear is what what creates uh, chaos. We always say when there's blood on the streets, there's profit to be made. Right. And I feel like this, this is going to be a uh, big swings coming up and midterm elections are coming. We know the pendulum is going to swing back to the other side. We know that media and politics has is so divisive right now that I, you know, me and you, even we, we refrain from the passionate debates we've had last year, the year before, because in the end we, we, we get caught up in it, but then we, we have to live. We, we really, we have to create and produce, not just for mm-hmm. ourselves, but for society, for our community. And, and it's a lot more constructive that way than to sit and argue things that, that benefit only the few. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. And I so, love that you share your knowledge. I mean, when it comes to real estate, there's nobody else. So I, I can say this, you, you, you don't have to say, you don't have to agree, but I can say clearly that I am one of your biggest uh, boosters, that no one knows real estate better than you. Your track record speaks for itself. And the fact that you're willing to take the time to share it, and I just wish people realized how infor- informative it is, because you have motivated me to look in the market, to diversify, because it's hard to find time. You end up concentrating on what you do best, and there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. But in order to grow and to expand, you have to get into, I mean, you have to take the time. It's hard to find time to go into something else that you're not familiar with, but you've motivated me to do it. And, and um, hopefully we could, I could show you some positive results, uh, yeah. <laughs> proof, proof that, yeah, you're absolutely right. When it comes to real estate to that, that is a safety net, a hard assets. And yeah. we still have a lot of room to grow in Houston. There's a huge population that's underserved. When it comes to low income housing, we discussed that a little bit last week. Yeah. And 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 you you also gave the advice, and I cannot forget that yes, we need to hold off on you know office, office space, office buildings, because as, as the pandemic has changed the way we work, but shopping centers, strip malls, storage units, uh, residential growth is still gonna be there. People, like you said, people are gonna go out, they're gonna spend. I see a lot of new. Uh, hospitality, whether it's restaurants or bars or entertainment. I mean, a lot of them are popping up and coming back online finally. And and people are are craving for it. You know, you can't take that away. Human beings were made to interact with other people. We're not yeah. made to be isolated at home and, and, and to Zoom. And it's just different, you know. Yeah, the other thing that's going on right now, uh, I think, I think like we talked about a moment ago, um, real estate, I mean, excuse me, residential within real estate will lead the rest of it because of better housing, et cetera. But along with it, there's really a great deal of industrial expansion going on right now. And with it is coming a lot more. And the word I'm hearing more being used more every day is onshoring. 
In other words, a lot of the outsourcing and offshoring that we have done as an economy over the last 20, 30, 40 years is beginning to come back here. And that is creating a lot of additional demand for labor, which can best be satisfied through legal immigration. In other words, people that come to the United States seeking good economic opportunity through the legal channels will do extremely well. We have we have the uh, welcoming gate and welcoming hand out for people from around the world to do that. And what that also does is validate what you just said, Jimmy, is that we're still the world's leader in just about everything. And as long as people want to start keep coming here, that validates um, the the benefits that you and I are talking about. In other words, people are voting with their feet. They're making investments with their money and their lives and their children's future. And um, it's a winner formula. And uh, again, I think we, we need to let success go and let it let it continue. Go with it. Go with the flow that's on. Now, there's a lot of things we need to focus on and continue to correct. But that, as you just said, gets into politics here. And we've talked about some of those things over this past year and a half. And we can do that again. And ultimately, we will have to fix them, too. I I, I take a different view on that. I, I don't think it's fixable. I think that we passed that. <laughs> I think people like yourself are that things about the greater good. Well, we've been through this. It's, it's just you have to pander to, to the extremist view to get those votes now. I mean, I, I see the rhetoric, what Rand Paul said, you know, misinformation works, uh, questioning Dr. Fauci. I know we disagree on some of this, but I, I don't I don't question experts. I'm not a doctor. I don't question you when it comes to real estate. And it, the my point is that the rhetoric, even when it comes to immigration, we've always agreed that you're you're actually from an immigrant family, too, and so am I. We all, we're the number one uh, best nation. We're the strongest economy in, in the world because of immigrants through yeah. since World War II. But because of politics and with a lot of these hatred, people are, I mean, do, do you want me to bring up what, what our U.S. Congresswoman from Texas said a few days ago? She said that we should kick out all Chinese students in college. Because they're all communistized. That is a very for her to say that and not be condemned. Now I, I hadn't heard. I hadn't heard that. Who was it? Jimmy? Um, I don't even want to talk about her name or give. I'll, I'll send you information on her later. Okay. Amongst okay. the community, okay. created an outrage. Could you imagine That's saying it. that about the African American community That's or the Jewish or, or or anyone? That's a travesty. Or but, anyone. But yet, it's it's okay because of what happened the last few years. You know, it's very dangerous because that goes against to what you said. As someone that has accomplished a lot, you know immigrants help. It, it is not divisive. And whether legal or illegal, we could talk about that later, because I don't know if Estonians are so spoiled. Are we willing to pay $2,000 for someone to mow our lawn or $50 for a cup of coffee because we don't have people that are willing to take those jobs at below market rates? Um, they, they are here for a better life. They are here to... yeah. To, to 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 escape poverty and war and and corruption, everybody is chasing the American dream, and we we've, we've seen so many success stories, right, of immigrants offsprings that contributed to our country, whether it's national security, uh, during war times to invent. I mean, there's so many stories, and so and, and being immigrant myself, mm -hmm. myself, we I cannot sit here and and see how we go down this path of rejecting immigrants and kicking people out. The best and brightest come here for school. And that's how yeah. we've been leading. And instead, mm -hmm. and, and and media, I mean, other countries, I know, because I follow international news. The, the view on us is turning very negative, Jim, because of these headline-grabbing stuff, say, sayings by these extremist politicians that pander to the voters. They don't represent the majority of our views, but because mm -hmm. it's been picked and choose to present to other countries. This helps Putin. It helps Xi. It helps reinforce... Mm -hmm. You know the, the the narrative they want to write. This is not what majority Americans are. That's not what we think. And but yet they're not being punished for it. They're not. They're still voting for office because why? They've hijacked the Republican Party and the so-called conservative view. You're conservative. This is not your view. 
They cannot represent that. They cannot. But no, there's no one else left. Um, I always say during World War II, um, we're, we're products of that because we, as Chinese uh, immigrants, we, my grandparents were persecuted when the Japanese invaded China and we, the country was decimated almost. The race was almost, uh, there was a race elimination, right? Just like what they did to the Jews, the Nazis. Yeah. Uh, the Jewish people said that and the Chinese people went through the same thing. If we don't speak up now, by the time they come for you, there's nobody else left to speak up for. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I, I don't forget, we, we study history because history repeats and people forget the pain. I mean, throughout history, it keeps repeating the same things. Yeah. I mean, it keeps happening. So, yes, we talk about real estate. We talk about we're living in a bubble, Jim. We're living in a great bubble. And I, I think it might last for a much longer time, at least for me and you, our generation will be fine because we're in Houston, we're in Texas, we're in, we're in America, we're in a bubble where we can still talk about investment and build houses. But the rest of the world is catching up. There is a lot of problems. This wealth gap divide is happening everywhere. So I'm I'm sending a contrarian view where, yes, there is great things. There's great things going on, and, and hopefully it keeps going that way. But there's always going to be the other side that we have to be careful to study history and not repeat. And mm-hmm. it's just to have more kindness and more compassionate. Mm-hmm. More, you know, that's all, more compassion, more empathy for people, right? That's all there is. Um, well, I think there's a I think there's a real irony here that most people don't understand. But once they do learn it, um, they're converted forever. And that is the private sector is by far the most caring as well as the most successful of of any aspect of life. And um, people who succeed in, in the capitalist system create wealth. And then they create more wealth by making more investments and spreading. Those investments create jobs for more people that in turn have a rising standard of living. And then at some point in almost everyone's life, when they have enough, they become quite generous and philanthropic and they give it away. Not everybody, not all the time, but by and large. And you find the United States creates a great deal of wealth, but it's also the most generous uh, group of people on the face of the earth. And it's been that way for 150 years. And I think it's continuing that way and will, will continue that way. It's not to say that there isn't philanthropy other places as well. Um, but success breeds success. And um, Jim, I, I, you know, I, I really wish that's, that that I, I, I hope what you said comes true. But, you know, you have to understand um, the family structure of the United States has changed. We went from family centered units, mom, mm-hmm. dad, kids and church communities where, mm-hmm. where, where, where uh, your faith is an important part, where church mm-hmm. uh, gives you the opportunity to, to remind yourself to give. Mm-hmm. We have right. moved away from that with the new the new culture, with the non-traditional family units. It's, it's very hard. And also, to be very frank, what you said is actually not true based on empirical research, at least in the last 40 years. The Reaganomics, the trickle-down economy does not work. It is not true. People that become more prosperous, corporations that go out of control, they actually don't pay taxes. They actually don't give back. They might set up foundations for tax purposes. Wealthy people might, but everybody just want more for them and their offsprings, just like the barons back in the 20s and 30s. Until, but then yet, if we do more taxes, then we'll, we'll call communists, we, we, we're restricting economic growth. I'm not saying I have a solution. I'm saying there has to be a balance because we know how much taxes Amazon and Facebook pays. We know that trickle down effect has not worked. 40 years is enough. Empirical research has shown Reaganomics does not work. It's created a much larger wealth gap. Yes, you're right. You yourself and people we know still give a lot back. But you're that but that this type of um, thinking, your your compassion, your your empathy, I don't believe that's the majority anymore. It really isn't. Because there's a lot of people I know that have a lot that you know, it's not a personal thing. It's it's as numbers as overall in, the, in in this country. But either way, I hope what you say is true, and I will pray on it. I hope. Okay. Um, Thank you, uh, so much, Jim. 
Yeah, I think the uh, what happens is Reagan is every president has had increasing tax rates ever since. And and the reason some people don't pay taxes is because they follow along with the tax breaks that are written into the tax yes. law. Legal, yes. Of specifically course. encourage behavior. Yes. If I'm a guy like Warren Buffett for a moment mm -hmm. um, and I'm criticized by by others saying you don't pay taxes, you pay taxes at a lower rate than your secretary does. The perfect retort to that is I'm doing exactly what the tax law wants me to do. No, I'm not I'm making with investments that. in other shelters and I'm I'm siphoning my uh, my capital off into ways that the government decided to encourage. I, I, so, I, I have my business is really to save my clients from paying Uncle Sam. There's, I, we want to pay as legally as least as possible. Uh, by as long as you do it legally, um, then you're actually not only following the law, but you're responding to the policy uh, incentives that the Congress has set up but Jim, over a long period of time. <laughs> but the wealth gap is wider. The half and have nots are bigger. Do I want to? No, because the dream for every person is to create success, uh, to create wealth, to create safety and stability for you and your family and your children. That's, I mean, that's human nature. Yeah. How do we go about it? How do we make it more spread out, like um, perhaps in the 60s and 70s here? Or how do we control? I, I, I'm not sitting here saying that I have a solution. I'm not. But it is not all rosy as Reaganomics and trickle-down economy has has pretended to be. So, but I, we could continue this next week. I mean, I know, I know there's a lot to, to, to digest. Yeah, we have a we have a whole year in front of us. That's Back right. to your point about real estate, Jimmy, uh, the ultimate producer of our television show, our 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 friend and colleague, Mr. Wei Li, has um, been interested in having us um, create a uh, another show um, that will focus specifically on real estate. That's exactly my point. We've been and trying to pivot. I to think that will be an interesting thing to do. It would um, be. I would be very, very happy to be part of that because we're pivoting to it already without, you know, it was great, great minds think alike, isn't it? Yep. But with that, we have a whole new year in front of us and I look forward to continuing on, Jimmy. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.